that's what we call aimbot boys. Smash that like button if you want to know how to aim like that. Brock I put on your settings and now I have been beaming kids and hitting no scopes. Love your vids. Yo what is up boys and girls today I am bringing you the settings video that hundreds and thousands of you have asked for. So in this video I'll explain all my binds and all my settings. So let's jump right into it and show you guys my settings first. Alright so right at the top we have controller auto run off, build immediately on, edit hold time at 0.1 seconds. Vibration off. Uh, ever since I turned vibrations off, I feel like I've played a lot better and my building got a lot more consistent. So my build mode sensitivity is actually supposed to be 2.0-2.4, but if you guys have seen Flea's video where he talked about why you might want to have a lower edit sensitivity, ever since then I've been trying to tweak them a little bit lower and lower, see if I can get used to it. So right now I'm on 1.9-2.3 and I might keep going down, I'm still not sure. My horizontal and vertical speed have been 57 and 55 for a really long time now and I feel like that's the perfect sweet spot for me. I also noticed a lot of people say that they try these settings and they beam just like I do. These settings are very very average right in the middle so that's why I think they have a lot of potential for most people like to be pretty decent with them but if you do copy them I still suggest watch my sensitivity tutorial and try to tweak them so they feel even better for you because even if they feel kind of good for you there might be a slightly different sensitivity that'll be perfect for you. You just gotta find it. So if you're playing on linear, the boost should always be down at zero, otherwise you defeat the purpose of playing on linear. Turning boost ram time also at zero, and sim boost off. My ADS, uh, horizontal, vertical have also always been at 14% for a really long time now, and uh, I feel like it's really good sensitivity for beaming with SMGs. AR is pretty close range. My long range AR aim isn't very good anymore because I'm on linear, but that's just one of the sacrifices you have to make when you switch from legacy to linear. And in my opinion, it's way more important that your aim is good close range instead of having a really good long range aim, but your close range aim is not good. So that's why linear, I still think it's the best setting to be on. Boost again at 0, 0, 0. Dampening time at zero. So this is where we're talking about linear versus exponential. Legacy uses an exponential curve. So if you're switching to these settings, there's no reason to be using exponential. You might as well just stay on legacy. So you can keep doing the L2 spam. Linear, I'll show a picture on the screen right here of what a linear graph versus an exponential graph looks like. So let me try to explain the difference between linear and exponential. Say when the stick is here, that's equal to the number zero. And when the stick is pushed all the way, that's equal to the number four. On linear, 0, halfway there would be 2, and all the way would be 4. But on exponential, you would have 0, halfway there would be 1, and all the way would be 4. The way the ramp goes up, you can see on the graph, it's not perfectly even like it is on linear. And because, it's, because linear is perfectly even, it makes it way easier for your brain to learn the muscle memory and get consistent with your aim. Versus legacy, which is always slightly different, it's way harder to, uh, to get that muscle memory down perfectly. Not impossible, but it's way harder than linear. Amos' strength should always be at 100. Maybe if you feel the tracking is too strong in close range SMG fights, you want to put it down a little bit, but honestly, I don't think it's a good idea. Use legacy look controls is off, obviously. My dead zone on the left stick is 12, and my dead zone on the right stick has been, like I said in my last video, I usually fluctuate between 0 0.10 and 0 0.9, or 10% and 9%. Lately, I've actually been on 9%, but I just switched it back to 10%. I feel like on 10%, my aim is better, but on 9%, my edits and builds are better. So if I'm doing free building and stuff like that, I'll put it at 9, and when I get back to normal games, I'll put it back to 10. Foot controller is off. Foot controller is not, you don't need this anymore if you play on linear. But back on Legacy, the foot controller used to help. And also, for the people that want to see my Legacy settings, right here. This was way back when I used to play Legacy. Um, you can see them here. My dead zone was 12 on Legacy, but on Linear, I have it at 10. Okay, so there's my, there's my controller aim settings. Now I'm going to show you guys my binds and my controller setup. So first I'll show you guys my controller. I just have a normal PlayStation 4 controller. I have on the back side. This attachment is called a FPS Strike Pack Dominator by Collective Minds. The link to buy it is in the description if you want to buy one. Uh, with my affiliate link, you get 10% off. So what this thing does is it gives you these two little paddles right here. Most of you guys already know, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know yet. So these paddles, 
the way they work is just like a scuff controller when you press them it presses a button on the controller so when i press the left one it presses x for me and when i press the right one it presses my arrow which is my build button even though i jump with x and build with this i don't actually actually ever have to press them so as you guys can see let me angle it down so you guys can see what it looks like let me do some quick 90s so you guys can see what they look like so I already have a full video on these uh, paddles, so I'm not going to explain them anymore in this video, but I'll put that video at the end of this video in the end screen if you guys want to watch it after. And then the next part of my controller is this, it's called the Galaxy Control Freak. Uh, Flea uses these two, I think, in his videos. He's done a lot of reviews on them. All it does is extend your, your stick a little bit longer and, uh, well, not a little bit, it pretty much doubles the length of it. And uh, because it doubles the length of it, it gives you way more control when you want to move it a little bit. And that makes your aim way more accurate. Uh, the link to these is also in the description if you want to buy them on Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure where else they sell them, but I got mine on Amazon. When you buy them, it comes with two. I use the bigger one. It comes with the little one for this stick, but I don't actually use it. Because it messes up my edits. Alright, so with that, let me show you guys now my binds on my controller. Alright, so you guys can see on the left here, we have old school, quick builder. These are all the old controls. I play on custom controls, which is almost the same as Builder Pro with a couple things switched around. So the main difference is that my edit button is L3. When I press L, it edits. And my switch mode is the arrow, which is actually my paddle. And then I open my map with circle because I don't actually use circle for anything else. So on build controls, um, the only difference on build controls is my pick trap button is the down arrow. And then the place is R3, is how you place traps. So if you want to rebind it, you use place and pick trap. Then rotate button is square, but I honestly never use that. It is also repair though, I do repair a lot when my pieces get damaged. And then change material and trap is left arrow. So on edit controls, I have R1 to reset my edits. I have L2 confirm, but I actually use release to edit. I'll show you guys right now what release to edit is. If you go to settings, you go to confirm edit on release and you turn that on when you let go it'll confirm by itself so you don't have to press it dead zone is the same as over there um if you do have a very low dead zone and your controller moves by itself that just means your controller is old and uh, it's either you're gonna have to buy a new one or you put up your dead zone but when you have a brand new controller even if you have a really low dead zone they don't move by themselves and then the final settings are my game settings i have sprint by default on so that means let me show you guys i don't actually press anything to sprint i just push forward and it starts running by itself and if you want to walk instead of run you just don't push it all the way you just push it a little bit it'll walk and then it'll run by itself so that's very useful so that you can use l3 instead of having to use it for sprint you can use it to edit and then there's also a setting a lot of people don't know this called auto open doors if you have this on and you run right into a door it'll open by itself so i've actually gotten comments from people saying the hand cam is fake because he didn't open that door with square but it's because I have auto open doors. And then the next important settings, auto pick up weapons. It can be annoying sometimes, but it's also very useful when two people fight over a chest and you open it first, you almost always pick up the gun before them if you have auto pick up weapons on. But it also gets annoying when you run through guns and it just picks up a bunch of random guns. It's still worth it in my opinion, but it can get annoying. Auto sword consumables to right just puts all your shields to the very right side instead of the first slot, it'll put them at the last slot. I have reset building choice on, turbo building on, confirm edit on release on. The last important one I guess is tap to search interact. Um, if you have this on on, I actually got a comment about this on my last video. Somebody saying fake hand cam because you didn't hold square to open the llama. If you turn this setting on, you only have to press square one time instead of holding it. And it'll start opening whatever you're doing. So it'll open a llama with just square instead of holding square. Or it'll open a chest with just pressing square and then letting it go. So there you guys have it. I'm sorry it took me so long to make the settings video, but I just been focusing on uploading other kinds of content. And since I already have a lot of settings videos, I just didn't, uh, didn't want to make a new one just yet. But there you guys have it. That's all my settings, all my controller binds, my controller attachments. And again, so if you guys want to see uh, the strike pack video, it'll be at the end of this video. I hope this video was helpful. If it was helpful, don't forget to use code Brock in the item shop. Every time you use code Brock in the item shop, we get $1 closer to buying the Lamborghini. So with that being said, here's some aimbot clips to show you guys why people want to copy my sensitivity and why I have the best linear sensitivity on controller. Boom. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy.